Hey, Andrew, thanks for having me. Um, I was uh, very excited to speak to you today. I guess there's uh, loads of questions we have. I don't know if we'll get all of them in today, but some of the key areas we wanted to cover was um, your path, the founder's path that led you to this, mm -hmm. uh, to this very exciting place. And um, yeah, without further ado, I think we, um, we wanted to start off by talking about some of your swimming career. So as an ex-competitive swimmer, um, Flow Labs very much into movement and flow. Um, uh, so yeah, please tell us sure. a bit more. <laughs> sure. Well, the, the swimming career is where everything kicked off for motion. You know, it was um, way ahead of time. I ended up doing a lot of the market, market research for years without realizing what I was doing. Um, and I'll tell you why. I, I moved to Stirling University to swim full time and study there. And I was training 25 hours a week, several times a day, but also really into like eating really really healthy i've always loved cooking i love to you know nourish myself properly and feel good but clearly three meals a day was not enough for four or five uh, sometimes six hours of training in a day plus uh, university work and all that sort of stuff um so i started digging into supplementation um but at the time, from a governance perspective, there was not very much support or information about this. So I really had to do a lot of that research myself. Uh, I wanted to improve my sports performance, but also just generally feel really, really good and uh, you know, take products that I knew would improve my health overall. That was the mindset. I wanted to perform well, clearly, but I also wanted to improve my health. And, and swimming became, um, without knowing it, a great catalyst for so many things. Uh, you know, it was so important for me to set quite strict rules, um, strict habits on getting the best out of myself, always improving myself. And it turns out these things are exactly what you need in business as well. So th th it set me up for all sorts of great things. Yeah, I mean, one of the, one of the areas um, I'd love to speak to you about, and you commented on it uh, in social media sometime this week, I believe, is process um, and routine over results and, and particularly making a parallel between sports teams and business, which I fundamentally agree with. I think at Flow Labs, we, we believe in a sports team ethos, which is often uh, almost unconditional love in that, you know, you've got to, you've got to pitch up, you've got to do the work, you've got to come and bring your bit. You don't just carried, get carried by the, by the rest. And, and, and I love what you said about that. So yeah, please tell us more about your, your routine uh, and some of your ethos around that. Yeah, well, this is where, you know, I was telling you, um, I didn't realize how much swimming was going to set me up for, for business. And I, I've realized now over time that some of the things that I set in place in swimming um, have become kind of almost assumptions for me in my mind. And, and now I'm seeing people in the business world talking about, you know, um, either big goals and on, on one end or, or focusing on the process on the other. And I'm like, hang on, I've gone through all of this in swimming. Actually, these are really important things, but they've just kind of been stuck in the back of my mind as um, you know, almost taken for granted. But I think they are really, yeah. really important. And so one of those things is, you know, it's great to have those big goals, those like long term ambitions, um, maybe a competitor that you really want to beat. And that gives you a bit of motivation. All these things are fantastic. But that motivation is a transient feeling like it'll come and go over time. And, you know, if I think about the swimming, uh, it's not what's going to get you out of bed every morning at 5 a.m. just thinking, uh, it'll help, but but it's only going to get you so far. It'll maybe get you get you through the first few weeks of training. You know, thinking, oh, I I really want to beat this other guy in training. But then, what happens if you start beating him? Then you know, where's that motivation gone? So you need to set um, more sort of profound rules um, that you obey no matter what, no matter what's going on in in your externalities. And so this is where that process becomes so so important. And if you become accustomed and sort of in love with that process then what happens is that every single day you're improving yourself and you become more and more in love with your craft whether it's sport or work and that's a fantastic place to be because instead of comparing yourself with others uh, you're comparing yourself with the you of yesterday or of last week or of a year ago and yeah. suddenly this is a great platform for a happy successful life and i love that and, and i think particularly for teams if you're um if you're leading and motivating others around you, being the alpha uh, in the group and being the push push um, who wants to keep winning every day is not always helpful for everyone. Not everyone, mm. you know, is, is motivated and driven by that. Whereas the routine, the disciplines, uh, and I guess some of the hustle or the work that's involved in getting to the outcome is, is often 
motivating for most and everyone, if not. And if anything, it has a galvanizing effect. So you can come in and have your rituals uh, and disciplines that help you do that. And, you know, what, what, what kind of rituals do you, do you guys have at Motion Nutrition before we um, talk more about the actual product? I mean, out of interest, how many are you? And maybe tell us more in broad terms, um, sort of your ethos, your vision, your values. And, you know, I'd like to touch, a, touch on some of the rituals that you share. Sure, sure. Well, you know, um, initially when we launched Motion, it was all about creating really, really healthy sports supplements that would help with your physical performance, but also your health. And we've, we've kind of evolved this quite a bit over time because um, the biggest thing that everybody faces today is a really busy life uh, and a really stressful life and dealing with all sorts of information. And, and then, you know, being super active during the day and then somehow thinking you can flick a switch and get really good sleep at night and everything's great in the morning when you start again. And unfortunately, that's not really how it happens for most people. So our focus today is really helping people stress less, sleep deeper, and live happier lives with more energy through the day. Uh, and so that kind of guides everything. And once you, once you start from that perspective, um, everything down the line kind of flows a little bit easier once you've got that sort of overarching goal. We want to help people make people's lives more enjoyable. You know, not just, it's not just about helping you perform today and tomorrow. It's actually making your life better. So the foundations are better sleep, less stress, more energy, and suddenly everything becomes a lot more manageable. You know, we're not going to be able to, um, you know, I see this a lot, especially in the sort of, um, you know, hacking, like, biohacking or life hacking trends you know you, you sort of go to or listen to podcasts and, and read blogs about this and everybody's telling you to get up early and maybe wear the same shirt every day or you know all these sort of mind hacks that'll make your life better and, and make you more Hashtag successful Steve Jobs yes right exactly the or still there. There, there's a there's a bunch of examples yeah. you know, Mark Zuckerberg's another one wears the same shirt every day um but I think they all got it from Steve Jobs. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they did. Well, maybe he got it from somebody else, though. Um, but the thing is, these can be very helpful. But at, at the end of the day, they're only going to make surface changes to how much really work and process your mind has to go through in, in, in every day. And so what we want to do is say, well, you know, that's fine. You can do that if you find that helpful. But really that's not going to change how many decisions and how much stress and how much information you have to channel, how much peer pressure, how, how many deadlines you have, all these things are real. So why don't we actually focus on equipping you to deal with those things in a better way so that your output can be better and you can enjoy yourself better throughout. So I, lo I love that. I mean, what is it that you actually do? So you, you do new topics. You've been featured in men's health magazine. You're one of the top 100 UK startups. Uh, and if consumers wanted to get hold of you or businesses, what, what, where do they look for you? I believe you're in boots, um, but, but uh, we're going to be coming on to the wearables. I know you, I see you've got yours on today. <laughs> I do, um, I do, yeah. Um, I, uh, we, um, uh, we, we'll come on to those, but yeah, what is it that you do in terms of products? And can you tell yeah. us a bit more about these? Yeah, well, um, our, our flagship products are nootropics, and we've uh, very purposefully separated these in two very simple and easy to understand product categories. You've got Power Up for the day, which is going to help you with decision making, uh, mood, focus, attention span, but it doesn't contain caffeine. So if you like coffee, you can have that. We're not saying, you know, adding a, a lot of synthetic caffeine is, is a sort of cheat way of ensuring that you're going to feel a buzz. That's not what we're interested in. We're interested in actually feeding your brain so that it can work better. And then what we've got night What is in that? What is the core so, components to that? Well, you know, people ask us, what's that one ingredient that, that's making a difference? Uh, there's actually 17 active ingredients in Power Up, and it's really the combination of these things that is doing, doing something really special. Um, so you've got amino acids, um, You've got botanical extracts and you've got a lot of uh, B vitamins, really high doses of B vitamins. And that's because that's essentially the energy source for your brain. And so all these things in combination means that mean that you have more energy. Um, the amino acids will help with decision making. So one big thing for me is that I used to get quite bad decision fatigue at the end of a work day. Uh, you know, sort of 4, 5, 6 p.m. Maybe you finished work, maybe you're leaving work, and then all of a sudden, just thinking about what to make. Mars bar. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You start making bad decisions, especially around food, I know all right? about it. Yeah. Yeah, or especially haggis. around food because, yeah, you're thinking, well, 
I, I don't know. I'm, I'm done for the day. You know, let, let me just grab a beer and, and some fish and chips or whatever. And so that this is not a very good place to be if you want to, you know, have a healthy, happy life. So uh, one of the things that Power Up does is help with those decisions and help with your, um, you know, sort of how many decisions you can handle in the, in the day. Um, mm-hmm. So we do that by providing the amino acid that's a precursor to dopamine. And dopamine is used by the brain for making decisions through the day. And if, if your body's or if your brain's not able to make anymore, you're going to start getting that familiar brain fog and, and start to get a little bit moody, maybe. So all these things are working in combination. And then, um, so that's power up for the day. And then in the evening, we've got unplug. Uh, and this is really um, the clues in the name. It's, it's all about helping you switch off from the day, calm uh, all those feelings of anxiety and nervousness and really sort of equip your body and brain uh, with all the precursors they need um, for relaxation and sleep hormones. So this is minerals, uh, some amino acids as well, and some botanical extracts that are really calming, like ashwagandha, for example. Right. And all these things in combination mean apart. that you, you can basically relax and, and get much deeper, actually a lot more REM sleep, which is the, the brain refreshing phase of your sleep. So you wake up feeling more refreshed and then suddenly mm-hmm. When you wake up more refreshed, the first thing that you think about is not, I need a coffee. It's actually, oh, I feel pretty good. Like, what's, what's going on today? Yeah. How do you take these products? Are they consumed as tablets uh, in, in shakes? So these are capsule supplements. Um, it's the, you know, we, we, so one of the things we really believe in is convenience. Um, and this takes two forms. The first, I guess, is how we deliver the product to you in terms of, not just you know physical mail delivery, but, I'm, but what I'm talking about is how you use the products uh, and what format it's in, what that what that sort of consumption format is. The nootropics are very simple: it's two capsules in the morning, two in the evening. Um, if you don't like swallowing capsules, you can open them and, and pour the contents in a drink, and that's fine. And then we have a range of organic protein powders, which come in um, uh, compostable sachets. So whether you're using it at home or on the go, uh, it's very, very convenient to use, but also you don't have to worry about the, you know, the sort of plastic waste that you're, that you're emitting from using the product. So that, that, and that really, for me, ties into the convenience part. And by that, I mean, we want to be as easy as possible for you to use our products and to feel good about that. And another angle to that is coming back to your question about where to buy our products is, you know, we believe very, very strongly that it's our job to make it easy and as easy as possible for you to get your hands on our product. So if you're somebody who likes to shop on Amazon, fantastic. You know, you're a big prime person, you know, buy our products from Amazon. You can subscribe and save there if you like that. And that's great. Or if you're the type of person that likes to go down to the local store, well, we've got Hon and Barrett boots and Superdrug coming up with a, they're going to be listing our products in London. You've got planet organic whole foods and these kind of places. Uh, and then of course, if you're, you know, Ideally for us, if you're a big brand supporter, then you're buying from, from our website direct and then you get all kinds of perks and content from us and loyalty discounts and this kind of thing. Um, so we ship from our website to all across Europe and uh, a lot of places throughout the world. Um, we don't ship directly from our website to the US, but Holland Barrett do that and they're very, very efficient at it. So the, the right. shipping cost is very cheap and, and it gets to you in like two or three working days. So you know, for now, we're happy with that. And tell me more, let's take a backtrack a little, uh, uh, just to talk around. So you were also a male model um, and swimmer. So obviously um, the, uh, there's a competitive element in you uh, and also nutrition is key. Um, can you tell me more about the, the, the types of decisions that led to the path of a founder, the mindset uh, and, and, and the learnings? You mentioned about discipline and uh, the competition and routines. What other decisions have in your in your life influenced you to get to the place of being the founder? What made you what made what motivated you to start this business by yourself or, or with your co-founder? I mean, uh, tell us a little more about that. Those first two or three steps. I'm I'm very curious. Sure. Well, everything fell into place, I guess, quite nicely in terms of founding Motion Nutrition with my co-founder. Um, when I retired from swimming, I actually joined my co-founder in his sports management agency that we ran together. Um, and I was also doing a, a little bit of modeling in London. And actually, um, some great experiences with the, with the agency and um, really helpful experiences from a marketing perspective. Uh, I got to work on some TV commercials for uh, global um, healthcare uh, brands um, shooting in South America and in the Caribbean, places like that. So I, I got That's to experience great. what... 
yeah, I got to experience experience what big marketing budgets could do, and that was very fun. But also, I got to witness firsthand how many inefficiencies there are in that world, um, especially in the TV commercial world. It's you get to do great things, and the output is fantastic, but there are also huge inefficiencies with it. Um, and while we were doing this, uh, you know, I remember very distinctively one day in in our London office, um, Charlie and I, my co-founder. We were, we were discussing what I told you earlier that, um, you know, as an athlete, I found it very frustrating that supplements didn't match the level of quality that I could get in my food. And it was quite obvious, um, especially being in the sports management world where, um, you know, supplements brands were quite prominent in terms of wanting to capitalize on, on athletes' images. Um, it was quite clear that the consumer for these products and the market was really widening. And it, these products were no longer just selling to performance athletes or bodybuilders yeah. or this kind of thing. And yet the, the product th themselves um, were not evolving. They were not changing at all. They were still geared towards performance, um, strength, uh, aesthetics, this kind of thing. But when you're talking and trying to sell to uh, perhaps a woman in her 40s who does Pilates four or five times a week and just wants to have better energy, and yeah. you know handle her uh, home life work life um stress and all these things better um suddenly the products just didn't make any sense and yet they were still trying to cram these products in that space and mm -hmm. and we saw quite a big um gap there and the only things that were kind of filling it were american brands coming into the uk and in our opinion, having it quite easy uh, selling into health food stores and places like this because there was very, very little competition, very few products that a place like um, Planet Organic would be willing to sell. Uh, and so we thought, well, this is interesting because for me as an athlete, I was, I was looking for this kind of product. But then if you imagine that woman in her 40s who, who's you know, perhaps already buying organic food uh, and is working out quite a bit, I mean, that's way more removed than I was from these products. So mm -hmm. clearly nobody's taking care of that person at the moment. So that's when the idea kicked in and together we had that sort of energy and, and willingness to, to at least dig into it. And then very quickly um, after that, get, get started. A lot of people are talking about personalization uh, as you've just described the, the sort of neat states of one niche segment of multiple segments and uh, so so many uh, what is your thinking around the personalization angle do you have uh, a a segment led approach i'm curious at your marketing approach and your actual product development approach at the the personalized uh, uh, um, propositions mm -hmm. well i think that the um personalized nutrition in terms of you know getting your own little sachet with your own name on it for, for every day and uh, tailored to exactly your needs. It's an interesting sell. Like it, it's, it promises a lot to the consumer. However, from a um, differentiation perspective of one, one person's sort of stack to the next, um, this does not require personalization to the individual level. I think perhaps there's a middle ground that's very interesting here, which is there are probably a couple of dozen or, or maybe a dozen different profiles that we should cater for. And, and we should be able to say, well, you fit very clearly, and, and this is where the data becomes interesting. Personalized nutrition from an individual perspective is, is thinking of building data around individual profiles. Now, I think that what we can do is create pools of these profiles and say clearly, as an individual, you fit very, very well in, in this profile. And now we can do things like we were going to recommend this mix of products for you. And this, and we know based on the data that you've provided us and on the market research and on the science that these products are going to be very helpful for you and you're going to feel great. Mm -hmm. And from a nutritional perspective, the benefits between that and individualized at, a, at an individual, a personalized at an individual level, I don't think there are any differences. I think the benefits mm -hmm. to the individual are just as good. And now we're trying to marry these things with environmental concerns. Um, we're trying to marry these things with scale concerns. Uh, and we're trying to make the planet a better place. So why would, do we require to go down to the individual level? There are so many inefficiencies here. 
mm -hmm. are so many cost inefficiencies. There are so many packaging inefficiencies. There is so much wasted energy, just like in that TV commercial world. There's so yeah. much wasted energy and wasted money that as a service that we're providing the individual, apart from the smoke and mirrors of you know, having your name printed on a, on a little sachet every day, you're just paying excess and not getting the benefit from it. So I think it's a lot more interesting, interesting. for us as a company to work out, okay, what are those baskets? What are those, how deep do we need to go? Does it need to be 12? Does it need to be 50? Does it need to be 100 different individual profiles? Uh, and, and once we've got those, we can say, okay, we know now from the science that these are the products that are gonna help these different people. Mm -hmm. and, and so we can do all that in the background. It doesn't need to be um, printed on a little sachet every morning. I think that's, that's nice, but people will get tired of it. And then they'll, they'll realize, uh, you know, perhaps when they've had an economic downturn, that they're spending quite a bit of money on this and that it's actually not particularly helpful. And perhaps they've already worked out, okay, I've done this for six months. I know what I need now. Um, yeah. I'm just going to go buy it from the store because it's going to be half the price. Yeah, yeah, and more accessible. Absolutely, that's that's a really interesting perspective. Thank you. Let's talk about wearables. So I think I, I can notice we're both um, wearable fans. I don't necessarily want to plug the uh, <laughs> the, the company, but um, I, I I guess one of the interesting things you mentioned the other day is that your view was that they don't all work. I'm keen to understand what it is you know about them. And uh, you know, Apple today announced in Singapore that they have a um, uh, uh, they 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 pioneering the uh, the element of being able to measure glucose levels, and I think you touched on this this week, which is very very apt. Um, uh, Flow Labs actually incidentally put in a, an application to the UK government for an innovation grant to develop a wearables and data led analytics led approach to boosting health, but holistically. Um, uh, as an aside. Um, but, but, you know, this is an interesting space for us uh, and yeah. I'm keen to hear your point of view on, on wearables. What, what's good about them? Uh, clearly we both wearing them and love them. And I, I must say, I love mine, um, certainly from a heart rate variance point of view, strain recovery, uh, the elements of sleep, uh, is a biggie. Um, mm -hmm. and that's, I think the differentiation that, that this particular strap allows, but, but the next level iterations, what's your, what's your view? Well, I, this is another thing that I've spent a lot of time thinking about, uh, just like personalized nutrition. I think that, um, look, I, I'm wearing it. I really enjoy it. Um, but I should say I've been wearing it for about four months now. And and for people who don't know, um, you, this product, you have to sign up for six months to use it. This is this is the way that they monetize it, that you don't pay up front, you pay a monthly subscription fee, and the minimum time is six months. And actually, I happen to believe that six months is a fantastic time period to spend on these products. Um, maybe they're not going to like this because they might need it, you to stay for nine months to make money out of you. I don't know. Prob probably not. Um, but I think that whether it's um, six months to a year or maybe six months every couple of years, I think this is fantastic because you're able to measure over time how you're performing. And, and during that six months window, um, you're able to test a lot of things and, and figure out, okay, what's helpful, what's not helpful, uh, what, what do they not know, and what do they actually really know? I mean, for yeah. instance, having, having five coffees a day, you, pr you probably don't need a wearable to tell you that it's bad for your sleep. Yeah. You know, drinking three glasses of wine before bed, you probably don't, know, don't need to, to know the data Absolutely. to know that it's bad for you and that you wake up feeling less refreshed. These are obvious things. But um, something that's perhaps more interesting is that I found out that when I wear earplugs, I recover 15% better overnight. That's an interesting thing, even though it kind of makes sense because I'm clearly less disturbed. Um, and so I think that during that six months period, um, you're able to gather a lot of these um, insights into you know, your personal life. And uh, again, uh, perhaps a more interesting one might be time-restricted eating. Is it helpful or is it not? You know, in terms of your heart rate variability and recovery, this is yeah. great. You're able to test it for a while and see if it helps or if it's just a pain in the ass for nothing. Yeah, I think that beyond this, um, if we started, you know, and I know that the founders of these of these companies are keen for us to wear and use wearables at all times, and probably they're thinking or fantasizing over linking it with your health insurance so that everything is tracked and you know we can downgrade and upgrade your your policy and your premium depending on how you're performing i think that that's a very dangerous path to take um, because fine the data might be 
you know, pretty accurate and you might be able to make great assumptions in terms of uh, what's going to come next and perhaps at what point you're going to get ill or, or perhaps early interventions to illness. This is interesting, but I think we've got to be very, very careful about what's happening to our mental health and, and how we're handling all this information. We're, we're not equipped as humans to deal with that amount of feedback to our daily lives. And I think that if you spend too much time, and you know, these apps are just like every other app and particularly social apps, they're made for you to come back and keep checking in and keep getting the results. And it's very, very addictive. And if you spend a long time on them, I think that this can have some pretty serious negative effects. Just think for instance that, okay, drinking wine clearly makes me recover less well. Well, you know, I'm with my family this, this weekend. I haven't seen them in two years. We're celebrating because um, there's a new baby in the family. Uh, we've got some great wine. Uh, we've got a great meal. We're eating late. All these things are out of, <laughs> out of what you know is helpful for your data. Well, yeah. there are people, and I think a lot of us, whether we're able to admit it or not, uh, will be thinking in the back of our minds somehow, I shouldn't be doing this. This is bad for me. Or even perhaps worse, I'm not going to take part in these festivities. I'm not going to drink fancy wine. I'm not going to eat because this is too late and I know that it's bad for me. And suddenly what's meant to have a positive impact is having a terrible, terrible impact on our lives and our social interactions and our family lives. And if we, if we should learn one thing about what's happened with the social networks, then uh, you know, this might be it. Let's be careful about how we use these things. I love that. I love that. The way you've articulated that is so important. And one of the key philosophies of, of FlowLab and our mission is uh, the role of tribe and ecosystem in creating long and healthy lives and happiness. And, uh, you know, we know the Harvard studies, 76 year studies that confirm that the single most important factor is that you have a healthy community of support around you for a long and happy life. Now, tribe, uh, as you say, you know, you get to a place where you can obsess about the kind of food you eat. You might stop eating meat, for instance. I, I don't know where your position is on this. And that, in certain cultures, could preclude you from perhaps hanging around the barbecue with the guys or um, socializing with wine, as you've just described. And, and that, I think, removes a big part of health uh, and culture, uh, which is, has an in, indirect effect uh, on our sort of uh, happiness and longevity. I love that. Speaking of which, who, in terms of tribe and role models, um, do you look to uh, for inspiration? Ooh, well, um, there's one person that's very, very important to me, and he was um, uh, the, the first person that, we've, that we worked with when we founded the company, and uh, he's one of the leading neuroscientists in the world, and he's also an expert in gut health, an expert in anti-aging, and he's formulated the vast majority of our products. He's called Miguel Toribio Mateas, and he's a fantastic source of information, but also he's a fantastic inspiration in terms of um, uh, how not to take things too seriously. And as a neuroscientist, he does things like DJs and uh, does live DJ sets. Uh, oh, wow. And this might be surprising for somebody whose profession seems so serious, but actually he's able, he, he has been able to realize that um, that fun element is a huge part in having a healthy brain and having uh, long-term health, longevity, happiness, all these things come into play. It's not just about serious, serious data, let's do everything carefully. Uh, yeah. You know, some of those things are very helpful, Absolutely. but equally we need to inject some doses of fun and lightheartedness and learning new skills. And for me, that's, it's been great to have him along the journey because it, it sort of keeps, it keeps us real, you know, make sure that we don't get too locked down in the serious stuff. And as a brand, that's very important to us. You know, if you look at Motion Nutrition as a brand, I think we're doing things very differently to um, what you might call the blands, which is what all the sort of classic VC backed brands look like, um, voided of personalities, the same storyline over and over again, uh, identical brands, identical colors, um, you know, everything looking very, very often very serious and, yeah. you know, sort of the sort of stuff that belongs in a Mr. Porter or Neta Porte website, uh, you know, some fancy magazine or, or some beautiful, um, you know, sort of grayed out um, Instagram feed, uh, all white and, and shadowed. Um, 
I think that as a brand and, and as our approach to helping people, it's important for us to keep things a lot more fun, a lot more approachable and yeah, generally, um, generally like a happier vibe. Yeah, love that. Where to next? I mean, what are your aspirations in terms of taking a brand? Is it uh, new channels, <clears throat> innovation to new products, uh, acquiring new customers? Uh, what are your aspirations in the next I don't know, three to five years and beyond? Um, three to five years is quite a long time, but in the first instance, um, you know, we've uh, we've been quite good at um, gathering information from people around uh, how they sleep. Um, and especially uh, before they start using our products. Yeah. So now I think what's going to be really interesting is to um, give people the opportunity to track their progress over time with our products. Uh, and this will, be, this will have benefits in several areas. Um, from our consumer's perspective, they'll be able to track their results in, in a way that's not as intrusive as a, as a wearable. I'm talking about um, perhaps uh, a questionnaire once a month, this kind of thing. But, but based on um, approved scientific tools, you know, methodology that is approved in literature. Uh, so this is much less invasive, but over time, um, the results are just as indicative. Uh, so you're able to get that tangible feedback without it becoming a worry and an anxiety in your life. Yeah. Uh, so benefits to the consumer, but also for us, well, if you're seeing that the product is helping you over time, you know, because it's easy to forget uh, if you've been using Unplug, for example, for six, 12 months um, and you think, oh, I don't think it's really doing anything for me anymore. But that's because you're, what's normal has shifted. <laughs> you're now yes. used to sleeping well most of the nights and not waking up through the night three, four five times. So you've kind of forgotten what it was like before. So if we can kind of be that guiding hand of being like, oh, hey, remember what things were like before and how much progress you've made, then that's going to help us because people are going to want to stick with the product. Yeah. Um, one of the things we've really noticed from our consumers is that uh, a lot of the time, um, you know, most of our core buyers are in the 30s and 40s, um, and they can sometimes be a little bit worried about their parents. Um, you know, perhaps their grandparents have gone through degenerative diseases, and their parents are aware of this, and perhaps a little bit worried because they're in their 60s, maybe 70s. Um, and so we've noticed that actually our products are being purchased and handed over to these people quite often. Oh, wow. So that longevity space is, is really interesting to me. And that's something that we're going to look into very carefully. Generally, there's going to be well-being and energy to the day, uh, stress and sleep at night and longevity. Those are the three areas that we're really keen on helping people with. Back to the wearables. I think the point you made is absolutely spot on. You know, I've, I've had mine for, I'm in my second year on the wearable now, this particular wow. one. I've had to have it replaced. In fact, they were awesome. I must say, this particular company, um, when I reached out and said, look, my battery's now died, I, was, I started paddling. So here's an interesting twist. I've started new sports in those, in those two years that I've used it roughly. Um, I used to run and, and swim uh, and do yoga with it. And I've switched to cycling and I've switched to paddling and uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And this is even interesting... Um, protective armbands that you can use oh, yeah. at BJJ forum uh, and I, it's helped me understand the change and sort of the growth and the variables that have that have shifted from the mm. other sports and the kind of cross training elements yeah. I think the um, there's always that worry of you know how our data is being used that's for sure um, but for me the most immediate tangible potential downside is how we handle the data yeah. I think that you know um, these are these are designed to be just tools, uh, but if they're capturing our energy and attention too much uh, and actually pulling us away from um, positive uh, interactions that we have in our real life, then yeah. that's no longer a tool. That's actually a distraction that can have some some downsides. I love that. Well, Joe, that's awesome, and I I think that leaves us in a very good place today. I'm not going to take much more of your time. Um, I've really enjoyed speaking to you. Thank you very much. Let's do it. Hey, have you, have you taken our sleep score quiz on our website? No, not yet. I okay, will. you should do that. Yeah. Okay. It, it's interesting because then you, you work out what, what areas you can improve on. It's on the home page. Everybody who's listening should do it because it's helpful. And, you, and then you get personalized tool, uh, uh, tips to improve that. Uh, and this is all free. You don't need to buy anything from us. Um, you can opt out of the emails at any point. But uh, hopefully even just the tips on their own are helpful for some people. Before we go, what's your view on, um, on where Scott, are you based in Scotland or based in London? 
No, we're based in London. Okay, and so your future, the business is going to be based out of London or uh, Scotland or Europe or elsewhere. How's the impact oh on God. your business? I mean, this is this is uh, more of a business uh, impact question on, on your yeah. decisions. Uh, it's a heavy question because there's so many, there's so many moving parts at the moment. Um, yeah. But you know, the the, the fact is currently uh, the vast majority of our customers, um, both retail and consumers, are in the UK. So you know, we'll stay here. But we've already had to um, set up an address in in the in Europe uh, for our retailers. There's so, you know. They now need an address on on the labels of our products to sell our our, our products in stores. Um, we're going to be having um, uh, some a warehouse on mainland Europe to to stock our products so that you know we can have uh, a, a sort of buffer there, uh, yeah. both for uh, selling on the Amazon uh, EU platforms, but also uh, we're selling into uh, Hon Barrett in in um, the Netherlands and Belgium now. So. We've had to, you know, add layers of complexity to the business. Um, yeah. But equally, these are layers of complexity attached to growth. So uh, yeah. perhaps it's not a bad thing. Adaptability. It's all, it's all about that. Yeah, exactly. Very interesting. Well, thank you. Have an awesome day. And um, yeah, good luck. I'll check out that sleep app, uh, the sleep uh, awesome. uh, survey. Thank yeah, you very sleep, much. Sleep, sleep quiz, yeah. Thanks, Andrew. Sleep take quiz. care. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, take it easy. Bye -bye.